Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well this afternoon. I want to share with you some important information regarding our upcoming uh, reopening plans. As many of you know, last week we announced that we're planning to reopen at the end of May, and we've determined a date. That date is going to be Sunday, May the 31st. And so on Sunday, May the 31st, we're going to be having our first uh, service uh, back at the fountain. Uh, This means that we're going to have live preaching and live worship, but there's going to be a lot of things that change. And so I want to uh, describe to you uh, some of those changes today, as well as uh, what you can expect when you do come. First of all, let me give you some overall information. Uh, During our service on Sunday, May the 31st, we're not going to be having nursery. We're not going to be having a, a fountain kids program. It will be only uh, worship, and we're only going to be having one worship service. Uh, We'll have that at 9.30, and then we will rebroadcast that uh, again at 11 a.m. Now, there are many reasons for this, but one of the biggest is just for the protection of our people and to eliminate uh, germs and to be able to quickly uh, clean uh, the building. And to be able to clean the building between our two services was just going to be too much Uh, too quickly. And so on May the 31st, we're going to be having one service at 930. Now, let me give you some details about what to expect as you come into the building and what will take place. Uh, First of all, we're only going to be allowing 50 people. That means that you're going to need to pre-register in order to come. And so there will be more information to, uh, to come out shortly regarding how you can do that. But we're only going to allow 50 people in the building. And so when you come, uh, the front doors uh, will be opened and uh, there will be a person from the security team who will be uh, greeting you. They will not be able to shake your hand. Uh, They will not be able to give you any hugs. We'll need to keep uh, a safe distance, but they're going to be allowing you to come in. Also, as you come in, it's going to be a requirement um, for the first week and uh, for the first few weeks, um, likely, that we need to all be wearing uh, masks. That means that I would encourage you to bring your own mask, but if you do not have a mask, uh, you're going to be required to wear one. Now, some of us may not like that, but please understand that this is for the safety of others uh, who are going to be worshiping with us. And so we're going to be requiring that uh, on that particular Sunday. As you walk into the building, you're also going to be uh, brought in to uh, the main uh, fellowship hall. Now, just this past week, uh, we did a lot of cleaning uh, at the church, and uh, a number of people were involved to remove a number of items from our fellowship hall in order to clean that up and to uh, make that uh, uh, ready for our upcoming service. So as you walk in, things are going to be looking very, very differently. Uh, We'll have stanchions and uh, tape uh, defining exactly where to walk and uh, where to go. We'll also have some security team members who will... Uh, be used to help assist you into the seats that you're going to be sitting in. Now, we're going to be having seats both in the cafe area and in our uh, worship center. And so 18 seats will be available in our cafe area. And if you are asked to sit there and uh, your family, then you will sit with your family. There will be communion uh, tables uh, in there for for those who are going to be worshiping in that area to, to partake of. Um, and so that room or that area will be reserved for, uh, for a small uh, group of people. As you move into the worship center, you're going to notice on the way into the worship center that uh, there's going to be uh, on the communion table uh, Bibles. Those Bibles can be used by those who need them. We're not going to be having Bibles in the chairs. And so if you need a Bible, I would encourage you to pick one up. But if you do pick one up, we're going to ask you to keep it because... Uh, We do not want to uh, receive those back uh, in case there might be germs. And so um, that is uh, for you and for our guests. And so if you need one, please take one. Also, uh, as you walk into the worship center, you're going to notice that there's a table for communion. You'll be able to grab your communion elements uh, as you head on in. As you go in, you're going to notice uh, some configurations uh, that are going to look a little bit different. Um, For example, you're going to notice groups of four for certain families of four and groups of two, all of which are six feet apart from one another. And so this past week, we put these uh, chairs into different configurations. Uh, It's likely to be something similar to uh, the images that you're now seeing. And as you walk in, you'll see 
uh, that those configurations are going to look very different from probably what you're used to. Additionally, the uh, tech booth is going to have uh, three people working, and in order to keep uh, social distancing um, in place and those rules in place, we're going to uh, allow the person who runs our uh, pro presenter to sit at a table in front of that computer. They'll be on a laptop. And the person who typically is going to be involved with um, the uh, social media streaming for our Facebook Live, uh, that person will be able to sit as well outside of the tech booth and in front. Um, only, the only person allowed in the tech booth is going to be the person running the soundboard. And so that will enable our volunteers to keep a safe distance as well. Um, within the worship center, you're going to notice that there's, there's not going to be um, communion or um, uh, offering boxes at the front uh, normally. Uh, you're going to just be asked to take your seat and to, um, to wait for the beginning of the service. As the service begins, we will have live preaching and live uh, worship. Uh, so that's good news. Um, but the worship team and myself will need to sit uh, off to the side and, uh, and keep, a, keep a safe distance. This means that, of course, I'm not going to be able to uh, give you handshakes and hugs like I would uh, like to do. And I, I look forward to the day in which I can do that again. But uh, for that particular Sunday and until it's uh, determined to be safe, uh, we will need to just be careful and practice uh, safety uh, procedures and protocols, uh, which won't, won't allow us to do that. Uh, I'll make some announcements uh, within the service, and certainly if you would like to speak with me, I would love to set up a time to talk with you at any time, and we can do that uh, in various uh, ways through phone or email or even set up uh, conference calls and, and things like that. As we leave on that particular Sunday, it's also going to be a little bit different because we're going to need to exit in a particular way. So our security team will be allowing the cafe um, to exit first. So all the people that are in the cafe will be able to exit. And as after they have safely exited the building, then uh, it will be time to, to, for the people in the worship center to be dismissed. Uh, as they are dismissed, uh, we will take them uh, a row at a time or a a couple at a time and, uh, and allow people to uh, exit the building uh, in a safe manner. Um, and we would ask that as you do so, you, will, um, you would go uh, immediately to your cars and, uh, and continue uh, so that we don't um, take too long uh, to exit the building. After everybody has safely exited, uh, then the rest will um, safely leave the building. And uh, during the week, uh, we will clean the, um, uh, the building completely so that we're able to uh, worship again the following Sunday. So this is the procedure that we're going to follow uh, during the first uh, week that we come together. And once again, that is going to be on Sunday, May the 31st uh, at 9.30 a.m. Now, before we, um, I, I let you go, there's a couple of things I want you to be thinking about and ways that you can help us out. First of all, uh, what I would ask you to do is to pray. Pray for... Uh, me, pray for the leadership, pray for the worship team, pray for all who uh, will be coming to, uh, to worship. And even if you're not able to make it or are choosing not to do so, I would encourage you to pray for the safety of all involved. Uh, we want this to be a uh, wonderful experience. We know it's going to be very difficult and, and uh, different, I should say, uh, maybe difficult at times, but certainly it's going to be very different. And so we want uh, all who come to be safe. And so please pray that those who come and worship uh, would be safe and they would be able to worship, uh, worship safely at the fountain. Uh, second, I want you to, uh, uh, to think about um, the needs to stay. Uh, some of us needs to stay at home. If you are in a category of, of people who are older or are high risk uh, because of your health conditions, then I want to encourage you to stay at home and to watch the services online uh, and to continue to do so. Also, if you are a part of a life group, it may be that you would like to stay at home and uh, maybe invite some of your life group friends over. If you feel comfortable being around people, I might encourage you to, uh, to use this as an opportunity to have a watch party and to invite friends, uh, maybe family members, uh, certainly other brothers and sisters in Christ over to uh, participate in the services, uh, but to do so from a home. And finally, if you're interested in serving with us, uh, we're going to be asking the, the security team to 
uh, to help out. But if you're also interested in serving within the tech team or another part of the church, uh, please contact me um, or anyone at the church and let us know of that interest. Uh, You may also even be interested in cleaning. Uh, You could come in and clean during the week and uh, and be free from... um, Uh, being around other people, but it would be a great source of help uh, for us at the church. So this is uh, the update that I had promised that you would receive. Um, Hopefully it gives you an idea of what's going to be taking place uh, in a couple of weeks. And uh, we know that this is a very unusual time for us as a church family, but we're excited. We're excited to be able to have a chance to come back together uh, to begin worshiping with one another. And while we know it's going to be different at first, we believe that God uh, is going to be honored and we're going to be able to uh, glorify him and worship him uh, together as a church family. And so let's uh, celebrate that small step. Let's look forward uh, to each uh, opportunity that we have to come together and let's prayerfully um, make good decisions uh, with regards to the time that we do spend together and uh, how we move forward. Church family, have a great day in the Lord and we'll see you soon.